Welcome back. As promised, we are continuing, rolling on through quickly. Well, some people would say not so quickly, but verse by verse through Matthew 24, the Olivet Discourse. And we'll also be going in um, a bit to Matthew 25 as well. We And we took a peek at, just as we took a peek at Matthew um, 23, just for the sake of context for these end times events in Matthew 24, we will be rolling into, there are some future end times events also in the rest of the Olivet Discourse, the sequel, part two, that most people don't get to in Matthew 25. Yes, that is all about end times as well. So let's pick it up. So here um, we've been looking at the Great Tribulation and some of the events in the Great Tribulation and the False Christ and the Messiah, uh, False Messiah and so forth and the false prophet in here. And then he's talking about second coming, and, and we have second coming events. And, uh, you know, and we looked at how some of this, people, some people will try to say this is 70 AD, and we looked at how this can't be 70 AD because he says, for one thing, um, up to this time, though, there will have been nothing so bad ever before, and there'll be nothing worse in the future. So that can't be 70 AD because, for instance, both war wars, both world wars were worse than 70 AD events. So we're still looking at the future. And Jesus mentioned that, like the abomination of desolation. And um, that's still got to be future because that didn't happen. And we can confirm that further as we keep reading in this um, when we're taking a look in these other verses coming up here. Okay, so let's roll into it. Um, so picking up in verse 29, the coming of the Son of Man is what the topic is here in the chapter. So let's take a look and see if let's see if the topic is even correct as it's written in here because these headings, I think, are put in by the publishers. Sometimes there are headings, especially in the Psalms, that are in the original text. Many times, most of the time, these, these headings that you see in here are going to be put in there by the publisher. Okay, so we can verify. Let's verify it to test everything, right? Immediately after the tribulation of those days, okay, so if he's, let's let's think for a moment if he's talking about 70 AD. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, what happens? The sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. 70 AD, I don't know. Um, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Uh, 70 AD. Mm, don't remember reading that. I don't remember any history books. Or, um, and he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they'll gather together his elect, or the chosen ones, from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. 70 AD? Uh, I don't think so. No. I think that's a stretch, and you really got to symbolize things away to make that happen. Now, now I, I like to say this a lot because it's fun, but anyway, I looked up the word immediately in the original Greek, and you know what it means? It means immediately. Yes, immediately after the great tribulation of those days that Jesus is talking about, the sun is going to be darkened right away. So there's not even a 2,000-year break there. So he's making it clear that this is not a foreshadowing and a break going on here between 70 AD and then, whoop, we're going to leap ahead. Which is ironic if people want to say that. I, I did have a, a pastor a friend say that to me one time when he's talking about, uh, one on the one hand, he was mocking me for, why would you want to throw that 70th week of Daniel way out there in the future? And I, again, we've already answered that. So he's... Kind of, you know, that idea is foolish, you know, you dispensational types, you want to take that 70th week of Daniel's, break it off at the 69th week and throw it out there in the future. But then they'll try to say that this here um, was 70 AD, all this stuff here is 70 AD, and then they want to say this, well, after the tribulation of those days, and where it talks about, you know, because we have trials these days, tribulation just means trials, it just means trouble, right? It's just trouble. Um, and it's all the second coming stuff. So that's talking about the future. Okay, so you're okay with a 2,000 year or, or whatever break 
here, but you're not okay with a 2,000 year break or better between the 69th week and 70th week. So they like to, you know, talk out of both sides of their mouth sometimes. It's like, let's be, let's rightly divide the worth of word of truth. Let's handle it the right way. Way If you're going to interpret it one way here, then you, you got to use context. You got to have a good reason why it should change or why it should remain the same or whatever. You got to look at the context here. So I'm just saying that immediately after the tribulation of those days was not 7080, we've got these second coming events. And, and no, sorry. I don't have, you know, you've got greater faith than me or whatever. I don't know what the deal is, but uh, no, sorry. So all these uh, son of man coming in the heavens, all the, all the tribes of the earth, seeing this, and, and we've read this in Philippians and other passages where every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord and so forth because they're going to see him coming. So we're in great power and glory. So we're talking about... Um, we're talking about different events. Now notice here, um, he'll gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Now some people will say, um, wait a minute, um, here it's talking about a different group of people and a different gathering than, wait a minute, we've got here one that's taken and one's left. And, 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 but wait, that's later. So they have trouble trying to say there's no rapture in this passage because you go, well, wait a minute, all these gatherings going on here. Let's take a look and, and see the context of how these gatherings work and the angels coming out and gathering people up. So maybe the rapture is in here. Let's find out. Well, one rapture is in here. And this is what some people will point out and say, see, this here is the rapture and it's at the end of the tribulation. Well, um, you could say that this is a rapture at the end of the tribulation, um, in the sense that all the angels um, will gather together his elect or the chosen ones from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. We do see that, okay? But um, let's do something really fun here. And this is the part in Matthew 25 I wanted to get to, and we'll, we'll get to it at least this time, and we might get to it again, but let's take a look here. Matthew 25. So you got the parable of the wise and foolish virgins, and we can look at that. The parable of the talents, and we might glance at that. And the Son of Man coming to judge the nation. So we're talking about in the context of here what who misses it and who's what goes on when the master returns and stuff. So we're still talking about second coming stuff here. So when the Son of Man comes in his glory, okay, good. We're talking about the second coming. And all the holy angels with him, so this speaks to the previous chapter, Matthew 24, we were talking about. So we're in Matthew 25, and we're talking about the same time point. So we're talking about the Son of Man, um, all the holy angels with him, and um, he'll sit on the throne of his glory. So he's sitting on a throne here. All the nations will be gathered before him. Now here, it's not just all the chosen ones. We're talking about all the nations are gathered before him. Everybody. And he will separate them one from another as the shepherd divides his sheep from goats. So we know it's not just believers from all the nations. Now he's gathering up all the believers and all the saints, all the sheep and all the goats. And what happens? And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, the sheep, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom pre prepared for you from the foundation of the world. In other words, that was the original plan. It has been prepared. And actually, the way history is laying out, this has all been prepared um, from the foundation of the world. In fact, if you look at Ephesians 1, we find that we're, we were all chosen before the foundation of the world. Don't ask me, hair on fire, I can hear it now. Ah! I don't know how that works. The Bible says it. I believe it. Okay. Um, he didn't go by how we look or how smart we are or anything that we can contribute or whatever. We didn't even have to be here, but somehow, I don't know if there's, you know, I don't know how he did it, how he does it. Don't worry about it. He's a sovereign God. He chooses, chooses when he does, who he does, and how he does it. I don't know. But it's what it says in Ephesians 1. Maybe we've got to symbolize that away, too. So, he separates the sheep from the goats. 
and um, then uh, the ones the sheep go and um, they go into the kingdom prepared from the foundation of the world. Uh, and then in, in verse 35, it says, For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Um, so these are signs. These are the types of things that, that his sheep, his followers will do. They'll do Jesus-type things. Um, we know most horrific chapter in the Bible, I think, Matthew 7, that many will say, Lord, Lord, didn't I do this and didn't I do that? And then Jesus will say to them in that day, depart from me. I, I didn't know you. You might have known who I was, but I didn't know you intimately. I didn't know you. So some people will do all kinds of good things and they're not really saved. They just do good things, I guess, to make themselves feel better or maybe to earn their way into heaven. Who knows? But that's, that's horrific either way. Um, and the righteous are going to say, Lord, when did we do this? Do all these things. Um, and, and he'll answer, says, surely I say to you, in as much as you did it, to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Um, then he'll also say to the ones on his left, the goats, depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. So the goats go into everlasting fire. Now, this is not the great white throne judgment. This is still Hades, which is still being used. That's another study, but when you get into Matthew, not Matthew, I'm sorry, Revelation 20, right, and in the end of chapter 19 of Revelation, you find out the, the first occupants in the lake of fire will be the Antichrist and the false prophet. There's nobody there right now. Not even Satan is going in there right now. He's going to be bound for the thousand years. We don't have anybody else even going into the lake of fire until the great white throne judgment when he judges um, everybody at that point. And then he takes hell or Hades, wherever, you know, the goats are, and he drops it into the lake of fire. What? Well, that's just it's just wild. It's beyond imagining. So uh, these go into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. So I just wanted to pop ahead there and show you that there's a completely different gathering there than what um, we see coming up here real soon. So we were here... Um, so the angels with a the trumpet, they gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. And so here he's, he's just highlighting that particular part of the event because uh, they're gathered together into the valley of decision and that's where the sheep and goats judgment happens. He's also going to end up gathering together, um, you know, all the nations too. But we see him coming into the cloud and he's going to gather the chosen. So that, we have the context, we know is gathering the chosen folks, the elect, from the four corners of the earth, and it's when the Son of Man appears in heaven. So we have a second coming and a gathering going on here. You have kind of a different event, and that gathering is, is described still as the same time point, second coming in Matthew 25, but it describes how, well, actually, he's going to be gathering everybody, and the nations, the goats and the sheep, Okay. Let's take, a, let's take a look here and see what he says in, in verse 32. He says, now, learn the parable of the fig tree. And stop right there because of, um, is this important or is it not? Well, it depends on what you're looking for in the context here. Is he talking about the Jews or, or is he not talking about the Jews? Is he talking about, um, the, see, a lot of people will talk about gathering in the fig tree and how fig tree symbolically is Israel. Fig tree is mentioned in Joel, who Jesus is, Draw, uh, is drawing heavily from that book as he describes these events. So there's similarity there. The fig tree, actually many nations are described. There's a like a national tree, and some, a lot of nations will have a national bird. Um, there are trees that are emblematic of nations in the Old Testament, and the fig tree was one of those that's emblematic of, of Israel in this respect. You also had, um, you know, the olive tree, um, spoken of as Israel, and it's a different context. You know, one has to do with national, one has to do with more religious. Now, so the vine grapes, we see that um, having to do with, with Israel sometimes, and the, and the grapevine. So it depends on the context. And that's another, that's a very interesting study, and I recommend it. 
um, when its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So it's spring. We're not in summer yet. So we're talking about springtime here. Um, you know that summer is near. Um, so we're looking at a, a particular type of a, a harvest that happens. Well, a lot of people will say um, springtime, May, May 14th, that's when Israel came back into the land, the fig tree, 1948, um, and could be. Um, but anyway, he's talking about uh, a ripening of a harvest here. He says, so you, you know when you see these things, you know that the, it's, we have a ripening going on and it's about time for harvest. So speaking of harvest, okay, verse 33, so you also, when you see what? When you see all these things, you know that it is near at the doors. When you, when you see all these things, what all what things? All the things he's been talking about up to this point, all these signs. When you see these things like the abomination of desolation, you see these things line up and the earthquakes and things increasing and, and all those types of of things that he's been talking about in the previous verses, then you know the time's near. Um, is he talking about Israel? Um, we could look at the context and see if that matters, but um, those things aren't going to happen unless Israel is there, because he's talking about all these Israel things there. Um, so whatever it is, he says, surely I say to you, this generation will by, by no means pass away till all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pay, will pass away um, before, or, or my words will by no means pass away. In other words, heaven and earth, earth is going to pass away, you know, as we know it, the heaven and earth that we're on right now. Um, but my words will by no means pass away. In other words, I've, I've said it, it's a done deal. If I've spoken it, it's as good as done. So, um, when he says this generation, a lot of people make much about this generation and debate over who it is. Who's this generation? Is he talking about the Jews? Or is he talking about a literal generation? Whatever. The emphasis in the passages is, is all these things. So when he says, I say to you, this generation um, will by no means pass away until what? Until all these things take place. So he's talking about a generation that is around to see all these things take place, not the tail end of these things take place, not just the beginning of these things take place, but he says this generation, this generation that sees all these things will not pass away until all these things take place. So there's going to be a generation that sees all the things he's spoken of here. Um, in, you know, up to this point, all the signs where he's answering the questions for the um, disciples. So he's talking about events and signs because that was the question. The question was not about, well, who is this going to happen to, Lord? That wasn't one of the questions. The question was when and what are the signs? Or what are the signs of, uh, of the end and what are the signs of your coming? It had nothing to do with who is this going to happen to. So this generation had to do with all the signs and all these things and the when take place because they're asking about when. When and, and, you know, so he's talking about signs and he's talking about the when. He's answering the question. In the end, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by, by no means pass away. Um, well, let's, let's keep reading to, to get the context of it. So the no, no man knows the day or the hour. Now, I definitely am going to break off for this part of it because um, this is another one of those phrases that's, you know, hotly debated and people will poke each other in the nose over. So these are some of those key phrases that I mentioned in the introductory video that people will debate and will continue to debate. To debate. But um, the question comes up, is there rapture? Is there rapture in this passage? Um, I think we know when it does happen. We know that we're not talking about um, 70 AD. I think we've demonstrated we're not talking about 70 AD here in this passage. There's a lot in here about the second coming and the tribulation leading up to the second coming, but is the rapture really even mentioned here? And so that's what we're going to get into next uh, in this next part here, and it's a, a big chunk. So process, think about, pray about, take another read yourself, and then we'll pick it up again next time with verse 36 and down through verse um, 34 at least. So we'll pick up this chunk right here 
at least next time.